Let's take one thought from A Course in Miracles. How about this one? Specialness is a lack of trust in anyone except yourself. So the idea of the world that you're inhabiting is a world of specialness. If you truly believed Jesus Christ, you would be his resurrection and his life, and you would see as he does. What are we offering? We're offering a single vision of the resurrection, and we are inviting Jesus Christ in to not only his resurrection, but his resurrection through you. And his resurrection through you because he's already resurrected and ascended, but when one mind comes home, he comes home with you. So look at that. It's a joyful, joyful resurrection. And what is the resurrection? What is the resurrection? Very simply, it's a single desire of the Son for the Father. The Father being the truth in your own self, completely unveiled in your own resurrection. Christ's face is seen in every living thing, and nothing is held in darkness apart from the light of forgiveness. And here the curriculum ends. From here on, directions are needed. Vision is wholly corrected. And all mistakes undone. Attack is meaningless and peace has come. The goal of the curriculum has been achieved. Thoughts turn to heaven and away from hell. All longings are satisfied for what remains unanswered or incomplete. The last illusion spreads across the world, forgiving all things and replacing all attack. The whole reversal is accomplished. Nothing is left to contradict the word of God. There is no opposition to the truth, and now the truth can come at last. How quickly will it come as it is asked to enter and envelop such a world? All living hearts are tranquil with a stir of deep anticipation. For the time of everlasting things is now at hand. There is no death. The Son of God is free, and in his freedom is the end of fear. No hidden places now remain on earth to shelter any illusion. Dreams of fear and misperceptions of the universe are gone. All things are unveiled and seen in light, and in the light their purpose is transformed and understood. And we, God's children, rise up from the dust and look upon our perfect sinlessness. The song of heaven sounds around the world as it is lifted up and brought to truth. Now there are no distinctions. Differences have disappeared and love looks on itself. What further sight is needed? What remains that vision could accomplish? We have seen the face of Christ, his sinlessness, his love behind all forms, beyond all purposes. Holy are we because his holiness has set us free indeed. And we accept his holiness as ours, as it is. As God created us, so will we be forever and forever. And we wish for nothing but his will to be our own. Illusions of another will are lost for unity of purpose has been found. These things all await us, but we are not prepared as yet to welcome them with joy. As long as one mind, any mind, remains possessed of evil dreams, the thought of hell is real. God's teachers have the goal of awakening the minds of those asleep and seeing there the vision of Christ's face to take the place of what they dream. The thought of murder is replaced with a blessing. And in his final judgment is restored the truth about the Holy Son of God. He is redeemed, for he has heard God's word and understood its meaning. He is free because he let God's voice proclaim the truth. And all he sought before to crucify are resurrected with him by his side. 
as he prepares with them to meet his God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them.